Hello, good morning, <clears throat> Composition 1 students. As you should be well aware, this is our last class. Um, we're just going to review the format of the exam, uh, and this, this is our makeup class for makeup week. <clears throat> A couple of you still have to do the creative writing uh, that you missed, but other than that, uh, there's no class remaining except for watching this video and studying for the exam next Monday and Tuesday depending on which section you're in. Um, so I'll start off by just saying the <clears throat> exam is separated into three parts. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> they're roughly equal in uh, weight. So normally this part is worth 35 <clears throat> and this part is worth 35 and this part is worth 30. Um, <clears throat> the exam's already been made, but it'll be adjusted slightly. This might be 32, and this might be 33, or this might be 30. <clears throat> Just to rebalance the questions, I have to proofread the questions and make sure there's no mistakes, and make sure the numbers add up. But roughly, this is 30%, 30%, 30%. The, the total for the entire exam is 100 points. Uh, also, as I mentioned, <clears throat> the exam's an uh, hour and 45 minutes long, which gives you uh, 105 minutes. So basically, um, we start at 10 o'clock on Monday, 10 o'clock on Tuesday, and 12 o'clock on Tuesday, and the exam runs with no break um, for an hour and 45 minutes maximum. At, <clears throat> at about an hour and a half, whoever is proctoring the exam, myself or a secretary, will tell you you have 10 or 15 minutes left uh, and you have to hand in the paper at the very latest um, in an hour and 45 minutes. So if you think about it, um, 100 points, 100 minutes, and you have five minutes left over. So make sure <clears throat> that you're on part C after an hour. If you're done part A and part B after an hour, you're doing fine. Um, if you're on part A after an hour, you're in big trouble because you're going too slow. Okay, so <clears throat> any, any part of the textbook where there's questions, short questions, um, for example, on page 5, um, we did those, the very <clears throat> first exercises we did in the class was about um, whether you had, whether it was a good idea <clears throat> to have a high school, a part-time job in high school or university, right? These questions you had to answer. Um, it's common, it's not common, or it depends. But remember, uh, just as I have in my textbook, you're not allowed to write it depends without explaining why. Like, you should say it depends. Um, and so you should say, the, give the reason. The whole point of the exercise is that you respond yes or no, and give some context, some reason, an example, uh, something related to your parents, something related to your culture, something related to finance, right? <clears throat> um, in, well, in Korea, university, you might think it's expensive, but university is relatively cheap compared to the United States, for example. So um, borrowing money from the bank is an option. Getting money from your parents is an option. Scholarships is an option. Having a part-time job is an option. Uh, it depends on how much money you can make, uh, whether it's worth it, uh, how much time it takes, and, and so on. So you have to develop an argument, right? So that's, um, that question has to follow up with a reason. As you know, that's all, always important. It depends. If you say it depends, you have to just say it depends on what, right? Finish that sentence, that thought. So what does it depend on? Explain that. Um, use some examples. <clears throat> and uh, those questions are, are worth a, a couple points each. Uh, <clears throat> next. Uh, the next thing for part A, uh, we'll call this the short answer section, okay? Part A is the short answer question. Um, <clears throat> that's 
Oh, these are part B questions. Well, we can do part B questions too. Um, part B is paragraph analysis. So you've got to look at something. Um, if you remember page 9 and 10 and 11, we did some work on analyzing whether sentences were connected or not connected, or whether it was complete, um, whether, remember the three C's I taught you, um, clear, coherent, and concise. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter what language you use, but <clears throat> unconnected, connected, clear, concise, all these things are sort of um, important uh, elements to writing a good paragraph. So you have to make, there's going to be a paragraph uh, and there will be mistakes. You have to look at the paragraph and uh, answer the questions following it and make decisions about uh, how good the paragraph is and defend your opinion. Is it bad? Is it good? Is it okay? Is it weak? Is it strong? Uh, as you know, I, I prefer you to say something is weaker or stronger, not bad or good because it's too general. But explain whether it's a strong paragraph or a weak paragraph, right? <clears throat> to go along with that, um, those three pages, you should also take a look at page 13, um, which was you had to write in class, you had to write about a gift, right? <clears throat> and thinking about uh, strong and weak topic sentences, identifying topics and main ideas, um, combining sentences and making them longer, more complex sentences. These are all things you have to think about. Uh, part A will be, some of these things will be sort of separated into specific elements like topic sentence, concluding sentence, something like that. that you have to put it all together and analyze here. And then you have to, on the third section, you have to write your own. Right? So... These are the parts, essentially this is the way the, the exam is designed, is you make sure um, you can do all the skills, all the individual skills. You put those skills together and analyze a piece of writing uh, so that you understand uh, the paragraph as a whole, and then you demonstrate that you can do it yourself. And here you'll have a choice of A, B, C, or D, and just, you have to choose one. Choose one and write a paragraph, okay? So there'll be four choices and write about one of them, okay? So far, so good, I think. Now, we'll get, go back to um, part A again here. <clears throat> so, page 14. Uh, there's a section about writing topic sentences and uh, talking about main ideas, right? Or I said, um, I said controlling idea, right? So there's a general topic and then there's something else. Uh, I also use the word focus in class. Like uh, you, what you have to do is circle the topic and then you have to underline the other thing. That's on page 14. We did that on class. I don't think it's that hard, but it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Um, you have to just think about what the larger topic is and how it's narrowed down or controlled or focused by the other part of the sentence. Usually there's a verb or a conjunction in between, so you know where the two of them are. You, you just have to decide the relationship between the two things. Um, <clears throat> similarly, um, page 15 is topic sentences. And uh, 16 is as well. <clears throat> 15 is choose between two of them, which is quite a, a lot easier. Um, basically, you're looking for, there has to be some sort of claim, a perspective, an opinion, an idea, um, or whether it's too broad or too too narrow. <clears throat> like I said, you can't, you can't make a... You can't make a topic sentence too narrow unless you narrow it down to the point where it's actually a fact, 
once you get to that point, there's nothing for somebody to debate, nothing for somebody to argue against, and then then that's the point where you're at something too too narrow. Okay? <clears throat> um, what's next? So you have to know your conjunctions. Um, <clears throat> this would be, this is easy stuff, but to, for your reference, 17 and 18, page 17 and 18, <clears throat> we'll do this exercise called combining sentences, which we didn't do a whole lot of, just a couple times we talked about it in class, but the basic and, but, because, since, <clears throat> you have to be able to put together complex sentences <clears throat> using conjunctions. So there'll be a few of those at the beginning. Um, all of you have practiced doing them. We've talked about it in class. <clears throat> it's, it's, a, it's not a major problem, but it, it just improves your writing because you, when you have sentences that are longer, you can express more complicated ideas. Um, that's really the only reason that um, we're going to do that exercise only one point per question for that. <clears throat> we did this too. <clears throat> I'm, um, we actually looked at a music video and then we're writing things, describing things. Um, this will be, I'm not going to play a video in the middle of the exam. So <clears throat> another, another exercise here. This will be page 20. <clears throat> Excuse me. Page 20, uh, describe a scene. Remember I, I told you normally we use the present continuous rather than the present simple to describe things even though it's not actually moving. It's a painting or a picture. We describe it as if it's a movie scene or it's a, it's a, it's a moving picture. Um, that's just the way uh, English grammar works. The example paragraph is pretty bad. So don't, and, it, and the picture is pretty uh, empty. <clears throat> the picture that I'm going to, I'm not going to say the picture is bad, it is a beautiful picture, but there's just a palm tree and a beach, some clouds and ocean, that's it. Uh, what I, I'm going to put some, there's going to be some people, and there's going to be some things happening in the, in the picture, so a lot more things for you to write about. So your paragraph should be correspondingly, you know, more complicated and longer. I'm looking for, you know, eight or nine or ten sentences here and ten to fifteen for, for the end, for the final paragraph, okay? <clears throat> um, another good example, just, we'll, we'll put this over here, is just extra things to, to take a look at. Complex sentences on page 70, 73, uh, sorry, page not page 73, we, we're not going to get that far. Page 23, there's just an example of what a paragraph looks like when you take um, the, the short sentences and you put them together in, in a, its a long form. <clears throat> page 25 is a complete the paragraph. That's the horrible hotel one. Um, to complete the paragraph, you have to write your own topic sentence. You have to fix the short sentences that should be combined to complex sentences. You have to add supporting sentences in, and then uh, end up with a paragraph that's nice and neat, organized, and uh, has been corrected. Okay, So topic sense, combined sentences, add supporting sentences to make this paragraph complete. It's the, on page 25, it's called A Horrible Hotel. Uh, <clears throat> that one, you have to make sure you do that one too. Uh, these are all, this is all practice stuff. Okay. <clears throat> um, in chapter four, there's concluding sentences on page 30 and 31. Those can be thrown in with with part B, check those out, uh, page 30 and 31, you have to finish. Um, that's not necessarily an exercise, but you do have to do concluding sentences 
um, in different parts of part B and part C. So you can take a look at those pages too. <clears throat> um, page 36 and 37 are generally helpful for proofreading, organizing, and writing when you're doing free writing um, for part C. Board is getting pretty busy here. <clears throat> Uh, and the, you know, there's the, there's the, the SNS stuff. Those are questions that can be asked in the short answer section, but I don't think there any, anything else is going to fit besides the fact and fiction stuff. And that's all, I think I ran out of space on the bottom here. So the fact are the last things that we did and the things that I asked you to do for homework. Okay. Those three exercises, which were on page 42, 43, and 44, things, things similar to that will be on the exam, okay? You, like I said, we, we talked for most of a class um, about avatars and uh, being polite and white lies and bluffing in poker and stuff. All those conversations we had about what kind of lies are more serious and is a lie, is, is there a, a, you know, a clear line between, you know, uh, a serious lie and um, the truth? Um, these are things that you have to decide. And as I told you, you have to defend yourself. You have to defend your opinion. Um, and if you're able to express in a reasonable way um, that you understand uh, the logic of the definition in, in the context that you give, then um, you'll get the point, regardless of the, there isn't a right or wrong answer for every question, as I said. So identifying fact and opinion, um, discriminating between um, fiction and fact and types of lies it's, it's probably some of the harder things you have to do in this class. Uh, I think um, the stuff on page 44 where you have to take a topic and then um, simply write one sentence that's a fact and one that's based on opinion. I don't think that's very hard. You just get one point each for that. Um, but discriminating between types of lies, that's two or three points. So remember, most of you are not writing very, you know, detailed answers. And uh, if you write a really brief answer, then you'll get a lower grade. So keep that in mind. Um, there'll be points um, in the margin or at the end of each question. There'll be a certain amount of points. If a point, to, if a question is worth five points then you've got to write a lot more. If a question is worth one point, then you probably just have to write a sentence. All of the exam requires you to write full sentences. So it's not probably, for most of you who have done multiple choice usually, it's going to be a little bit different um, in terms of how you answer the questions and how you have to think about it and how much time it takes for you to do the questions. Um, but it's not necessarily harder. Uh, you can still get a very good grade, um, just as you would on multiple choice. You just have to make sure that you think carefully and uh, write your answers out uh, without too much, too many grammar mistakes. Uh, people always ask me, does grammar count? I say, I'm not, I'm not uh, taking points away um, per question for grammar, but if your grammar is really... Except, except part C. I mean, if your grammar is really bad on part C, then you're going to lose some points. But overall, this is not really about grammar. If the grammar mistake makes the answer wrong, then you're going to lose the point. Uh, and if your grammar is not good enough um, to clearly communicate your arguments on part C, then not, that's also going to cost you uh, some marks. But otherwise, you don't need to worry about having perfect grammar. So, you know... Don't uh, erase half of your writing. Just keep going and make sure you answer the questions completely as best as you can. I think that's the best strategy. 
So that's our last class. You can, of course, you're allowed to um, send me an email if you're concerned about anything and just make sure that you hand in that last homework assignment and we have our exams Monday and Tuesday and that will be all, okay? Thank you for listening to the last lecture and I'll see you next week.